so we have created the form for the add video metadata functionality and we have also come implemented the functionality to view the video to display the video in the save video details page so now what we are going to do is we are going to implement the save video details functionality and after that we are going to secure our angular and spring boot application using auth2 uh, we are going to mainly use auth0 as our external authorization server so without any further delay let's start the video So I opened the save video details component HTML file and here you can see we have already created the form as I mentioned before we have created a form group called as save video details form and also a mat form field called title description uh, video status and we also have a chip list where we are going to add the relevant tags for the video followed by the upload thumbnail uh, file picker. And lastly, we have the save button. And when we click, when the user clicks on the save button, we have to send the details to our Spring Boot backend. And our backend will indeed save these details into the MongoDB database. So to implement the save video details functionality, I'm going to first define, a, I'm going to first define an ng click directive here, in the save button. And from here, I'm going to call a method called as save video. Of course, this, uh, save video method is not yet existing in the component so I'm going to create this method save video inside the save video details component.ts file and inside this save video method I'm going to make a call to video service let me first save these details here so okay to make a HTTP call to our backend right so for that first we need to create the DTO the video DTO object to send to make a put request so if I open the backend and go to the video controller you can see that we have already created the relevant the required endpoint to edit the video metadata with the put HTTP method with the put mapping right so we have to make a HTTP put call from our video service in this case so for that let's open our save our component.ts file and uh, in here first we have to as I said before construct the video DTO right for that I'm just going to create first create a variable called video metadata and this variable is going to refer to object of type video DTO right this video DTO contains object contains fields for video ID right the video ID is going to be this dot video ID followed by title so this is going to be this dot save video details form dot get and I'm going to type in title dot value what I'm doing here is whenever the user types in the title inside the form we are going to make use of the save video details form and we are going to retrieve the whatever value which is typed inside the title field and we are going to assign this value to the title field of the video metadata object so next i'm going to also create a field for the remaining fields of the video dto uh, it's going to be description for this description i'm also going to do the same thing this dot say video details form dot get description dot value followed by tags the tags i already have the all the tags inside the tags array here so whenever the user is adding or removing any tags in the ui we are maintaining it already inside this array right so i'm just going to assign the this array to this tags field and followed by video status for video status also we have a form control so i'm going to type in see this dot say video details form dot get video status right and i'm going to type in dot value followed by url so the url is going to be this dot video url and thumbnail url is going to be this dot so we don't have the thumbnail url so i'm just going to scroll up and write inside the constructor whenever we are reading the video we are also going to uh, define the thumbnail url uh, assign the thumbnail url to a different variable so I'm going to type in this dot thumbnail URL equals data dot 
thumbnail URL, right? So I'm just going to type in, create a new field called thumbnail URL. And now I can assign this thumbnail URL to the thumbnail URL field inside the video metadata object. Okay, it looks like there's a, an error. Let's see what it says. Type video ID is not assignable to type video DTO. Video ID does not exist. Okay, um, yeah, so it should be ID instead of video ID, right? So I'm just going to rename video ID to ID and uh, there is also an error that URL does not exist in type video DTO. Let's see. So it's called as video URL instead of URL. So I'm just going to also rename it to video URL. And now the object should be created with, you have created the object which we will use as a request body for making the HTTP call. So now let's go ahead and call the video service dot save video method and pass in the video metadata as an argument to the method. And of course this method does not yet exist. So I'm just going to create this method inside the video service class. And inside the save video method, I'm going to make a HTTP put call. So I'm just going to make use of the HTTP client, this dot HTTP client dot put. And uh, in here, I'm going to type in the HTTP URL. So I'm going to type in the URL. So it's going to be HTTP localhost 8080 slash API slash videos slash videos. And as a request body, I'm going to pass in the video metadata and that's it, right? And uh, let's see what we are uh, returning as a response for this particular endpoint. We are receiving the same video DTO as a response, right? So let me open again the video service and define the return type as video DTO. And let's also add a return statement here. And I'm going to also change the return type of this particular method as observable of video video. So now we have defined the save video method inside the video service. Let's go back to our save video details component file, TypeScript file. And in here we have made the call and now we have to also subscribe to this observable so that we can get hold of the response of what we are receiving from the Spring Boot backend. And now once we got the response, what we have to do is we have to show another notification like how we did for upload thumbnail functionality. We have to give, we want to show another notification in our save video details page that the save operation is actually successful, right? So for that, I'm going to type in, make use of this mat snack bar, which we have configured in the previous video. Uh, so I'm going to type in this dot mat snack bar dot open and I'm going to type in video metadata updated successfully, right? And I'm going to create, uh, type in the close action as okay. All right, let's see whether this is working or not. Let me open the browser and in here, let's define the title of this video as sunset, description as sunset video, the video status as public, the tags I'm going to type in as sunset, video, river, something like that. Three tags are enough. And I'm going to choose also a thumbnail for this video. So again, I'm going to choose the thumbnail and see that uh, the upload functionality is still working or not. So yeah, the upload functionality is still working. And then I'm going to finally save the video. So I'm just going to click on save and you can see already that the video, the notification video metadata updated successfully. I'm just going to click on okay. And now you can see that the, the snack bar has disappeared. So let's verify whether this data is actually saved into the database or not. So I'm just going to open my MongoDB database UI. So I'm just going to show you the, the last document inside the video collection. You can see that uh, whatever data we have typed in called title as sunset, sunset video, the number of tags, the video URL, the video status, and also the thumbnail URL are all saved inside the database. So that's good. So now we can go ahead with our next functionality that is to secure our Angular and Spring Boot applications using Auth0. All right, so before we go ahead and secure our Angular and Spring Boot applications, you need to know what is OAuth2 and why we need to use it and what and what does actually OAuth2 means, right? So for that, you can refer, I highly suggest you to refer the Spring Boot 
OAuth tutorial, which is already existing in my YouTube channel. So I suggest you to go through all the three parts to get a good understanding about OAuth 2. All right, so I'm going to open a new tab and search for Auth0. And I'm going to click on the Auth0.com link. And in here, just make sure to create a new account for Auth0. I'm going to, I already have an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. All right, so once you have logged in to your account, you can see in the left side, you can have different tabs called as application authentication and all the settings which is required uh, to secure our applications using all zero. Uh, so I'm just going to click on applications and here you can create different types of or two clients for your applications or APIs. So I'm just going to click on applications. Then just to serve as a recap in the very first video, we have defined the application architecture, right? And uh, if I go to the blog post, so you can see that in the architecture diagram, we have two clients, the Angular client and the Spring Boot REST API client. These two clients are communicating with Auth0. So Angular client will use Auth0 to request new tokens. And uh, these tokens are sent to the Spring Boot REST API whenever we make a call. And our Spring Boot REST API will validate the token against Auth0 whenever it receives a new token, right? So we have to create two clients also in Auth0, one for our Angular application and another for the Spring Boot REST API. So first let's go ahead and create a client for our Angular application. So I'm going back to Auth0 and I'm going to click on the button create application. Let's make sure that you are under the applications tab. So I'm going to click on create applications and I'm going to name my application as YouTube clone angular client, right? So here you can select the type of the application. So this is a single page web application, right? So it's very easy to choose and I'm just going to click on create. So this is going to create our angular client application. And uh, here you can see that by default, it will show you how to implement Auth0 authentication in your Angular application. I'm going to choose the technology as Angular, obviously. And here you can see the complete guide already. Auth0 has configured the guide, how to configure Auth0 in your Angular applications. As part of this tutorial, we are, made, we are using the Auth0 Angular SDK, but we are not going to use it. We are going to use another library. You can see that in the, in the later part of the tutorial. I'm just going to click on settings. And in here, you can see that uh, the, we have the name of the client we have just provided, the domain, Programming Techie, and it has created a client ID and also a client secret make sure and uh, we can also provide an application logo so whenever you click on the login button and uh, you can see the login page of Auth0 whenever you want to authenticate and in there instead of showing the Auth0 logo by default you can provide your own logo URL and here we have to specify under the application URI tab the callback URL so whenever we are trying to request an authentication to Auth0 uh, Auth0 after providing the authentication it should call back to our application URL right so we have to provide to which URL Auth0 should return back the response once the authentication authentication mechanism is completed, right? So for that, I can just provide the callback URL as our localhost URL, HTTP localhost 4200, right? And similarly, we also have to uh, define the logout URL. So I'm just going to type in as localhost 4200, right? So after the logout is completed, we are going to, uh, we, are, we, we want to be redirected back to the, uh, the root page. And similarly, the allowed web origins, as of now, we are just going to allow localhost 4200 as the allowed web origins. I think that's it, right? We also have some other information. I'm not going to go into those details now. I'm just going to click on save changes. Now, all these changes are, uh, are saved successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and now create another client for our Spring Boot REST API. For that, I'm just going to click on APIs and click on create API. API is going to be called as YouTube clone Spring Boot API client. And the identifier is going to be the URL at which our Spring Boot API is BI is available. So for that, I am going to type in HTTP localhost ADIT. And so I'm just going to leave it as RS256. I'm just going to click on the button create. And now you can see that the Spring Boot API client is created successfully. And if you go to the settings, we have an ID 
and uh, the name and the identifier for our API client and we also have a default expiration time for our token so it's around 86,400 seconds I'm just going to click on save to save these changes uh, so as part of this video you have created the clients so in the next video we are going to go ahead and do the actual implementation of uh, of OAuth 2 using these two clients so I will see you in the next video until then happy coding techies